Today we're going to look at Deuteronomy 8, Matthew chapter 4, and 1 Corinthians chapter 10. So if you want to read the readings for a start, um, Deuteronomy 8 verses 1 to 5, Matthew chapter 4 verses 1 to 11, and 1 Corinthians 10 verses 1 to 13. And perhaps what we can do is start with Deuteronomy chapter 8 and Matthew chapter 4. And I want us to have a look at the similarities there between these two passages. Now, first of all, of course, we find that hunger is present in both passages. We find in Deuteronomy 8, it refers to the Israelites uh, being hungry in the desert. And then here in Matthew chapter 4, um, Jesus is taken into the spirit, by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. So it is interesting that many people believe that in Matthew chapter 4, uh, verse 4, where Jesus answers the devil, when the devil says to him, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. So he is actually saying to him, use your divine power, use the power of God to make bread for yourself out of these stones. And Jesus then quotes a verse from Deuteronomy chapter 8. And it's all familiar to us. Um, he says, it is written, man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. So that verse, of course, you find here in verse 3 of Deuteronomy 8. Uh, it says, he humbled you, causing you to hunger and then feeding you with manna which neither you nor your fathers had known, to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. So we must take careful note of why Jesus is quoting this verse from Deuteronomy chapter 8. There is a very specific reason. Many people think, oh look, he's answering Satan with scripture. Isn't that lovely? Yeah, yeah, that's fine, but... They miss the point. And in fact, the point there are two points to this issue. First of all, Jesus answers Satan. He says, no, I am not going to use God's power to make bread for myself. That's the first point. And we see that that's exactly what the Israelites did all the time when when hunger came, when they were hungry, immediately use, using God as an idol, as it were, as they were used to doing, to get food. Pray for food. Hey, give us food. Give us food. Running to him when they are in need. Supply our food. That's what you exist for. That's really what they say. And what does Jesus do? He refuses to do that. So that's the first lesson. He does not use God's power as an idol to make food for himself because he's hungry. Yes, he is hungry. But he says, no ways. Uh, that's not what it's for, which is beautiful. I will not use God as an idol to get me what I want, what I need now. All right, so the second point then is the fact that he is referring to something else. He says, no, 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 man does not live on bread alone, but from every word that comes from the mouth of God. So the second thing he's really saying is that 
I live on something else. Um, there is something else that is sustaining me. And of course, when we take that to heart, we realize that's mm, the same in Deuteronomy chapter 8. God is trying to teach them that very lesson. Because it says that he caused them to hunger in verse 3 and then fed them with something that neither themselves or their fathers had known. That's very interesting. They did not know what it was. Of course, we know that it, is, it was called manna. But take note that even the word manna means what is it in Hebrew. So they didn't know what it was, and so they, that became its name. The manna is really just what is it. They didn't know what it was. And that's an interesting point, because in their definition, food was bread, were real food. You know, food that you and I would know as food. They wanted bread, because that's food. So here God is trying to teach them, no, no, no. That's your definition of food. But I have a different definition of food. And I want to teach you this, that I can sustain you with something other than bread, your definition of food. That's the lesson that he was trying to teach them. Now, on the side, uh, this is very interesting, isn't it? That God was the very one who caused them to hunger. So many times I've heard Christians say, oh, God will never let me go hungry. <laughs> well, guess what? He will if, if he needs to fulfill his purposes with it. So just keep that in mind on the side. He will cause you to hunger as he caused the Israelites to hunger if he needs to teach you something. Um, now, this issue of the manna not be, being something that they didn't know what it was is key. Because it did sustain them. We know it did. It sustained them for 40 years. But even at the end of the 40 years, they still didn't know what it was. They were still calling it, what is this? Um, something we don't know. But it did sustain them. In fact, not only did it sustain them in terms of the way food sustains, but look at verse 4 of Deuteronomy 8. It says, your clothes did not wear out and your feet did not swell during these 40 years. Wow. So it certainly sustained even the entire person, not just the body as such as food would do. Now, what is the lesson in this for us then today? Well, first of all, of, of course, the issue of using God as an idol when you are in need. And when that need is fulfilled, you put him back on the shelf. I'll see you again when I need something. That is making an idol out of God's power, an idol out of God. So that's the first thing we need to think about. And each one of us needs to think about that in our own lives. Do we do that? We say we don't worship idols. We don't have idols, but we're making God out of an idol because we use him. We use his power when we are in need. Um, it's interesting to note that in the Lord's Prayer, even, uh, where we pray, give us this day our daily bread. Believe it or not, but that term, daily bread, is not in the original text at all. In the original Greek text. In the original Greek text, it says, give us this day our substance from above. Which fits in very beautifully with this lesson, doesn't it? It's not bread. The Israelites asked for bread, and God gives them something that they don't know, but which sustained them even better than bread. 
And therefore, it is just fitting that in the Lord's Prayer, it doesn't say bread. It doesn't say daily bread. It says, give us this day our substance from above. Very beautiful. Anyway, the second lesson then for us is to make a switch. Now, I gave you a third reading this morning, uh, the one from 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And let's just go there for a moment. Now, Paul is writing something here about the Israelites. And interestingly enough, he refers to the manna as spiritual food. So you can read it there in verse 3 of 1 Corinthians chapter 10. He calls the manna spiritual food. And then he goes on to explain how they tested God in verse 9. They grumbled. And then he says, these things happen to them as a lesson for us. And then Paul does a strange thing. In verse 13 of 1 Corinthians 10, he goes and speaks about temptation. So I'll read it for you. No temptation has seized you except what is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. So temptation. Right. So he, he, he speaks about testing God and grumbling as they did. And what was the issue? Well, it was the fact that they were hungry and they demanded food. Very much like we do. We're hungry, we demand food from God because we think that's what he exists for, to give us food. And there is a temptation there, Paul says. He says, be careful of that temptation. And in overcoming the temptation... And the temptation now being the hunger for physical things. I have a need. And it's not just bread in our case. It can be money. I need money now, God. Mm. And what he wants us to do is get over that hurdle. Say, listen, like Jesus said, no, no, no. Man doesn't live by bread alone. I'm not going to use, use you to provide this. I want to be taken a step further. I want to learn the lesson, um, resist the temptation of using God as an idol, gives us access to that other world, that other food, which we don't know what it is, but it sustains better than bread. So do you see that Paul uses the overcoming of the temptation to do that, you just hang on. No, 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 just hang on. Lord, I'm not going to now plead with you and grumble for food. I'm going to follow what you are trying to teach the Israelites in Deuteronomy 8 and also what Jesus is saying in Matthew 4. And I'm going to go, no, yeah, I may well be hungry. I mean, Jesus had been fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. I think we get grumbly and, and demand food from God when we've been a day without food or maybe even less. It's ridiculous. So he was very hungry, but he just said, no, 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 no I'm being sustained by something else. And of course, um, it's amazing in it's in the book of John. Um where Jesus, of course, says in John chapter 6, um, he refers to himself as the real food. So that also links up with this. He says, you need to have me. I am the real food, the, the real bread of life. So that links up with that. But I just wanted to, to read you something which has direct bearing on, on what he says to Satan in, in Matthew chapter 4. So I'll read to you from uh, John chapter 4, verses 31 to 33. Meanwhile, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. 
But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Then his disciples said to each other, could someone have brought him food? How funny. But do you see, Jesus knew this food, which was beyond bread. He was being sustained by something other than bread. And we need to get to that place. And, and Paul explains to us in 1 Corinthians 10 how you get to that place. You resist the temptation of using God as an idol to get you what you need right now. You say, Lord, you have caused me to hunger, just like you caused the Israelites to hunger in Deuteronomy 8. I accept that. Thank you for it. You are trying to teach me something. Lord, I want to know about this other food. Isn't that magnificent? And this is what we this is where we need to be. So the next time God brings you into a place of need, just as he did the Israelites, relax into it and go, I see, Lord, you are trying to teach me that you will sustain me by something other than bread. In fact, we need to ask his forgiveness for claiming that it's only bread that will sustain. And then we have learned the lesson, not only of Deuteronomy 8, but also the essence of what Jesus is saying to Satan. And I pray that for all of you and for myself. So take great care. Take great care the next time God brings you into a place of need. And remember what we discussed today. Amen.